Hi, welcome back to Introduction to Sociology. Today is Functionalist Theory Day. So good morning, or good evening, or good afternoon. Um, this lecture will give you a more detailed explanation of what the text covers in terms of theory. Um, and this, this information that you get in these video lectures, you'll need for the test and for the rest of the course. If you can get this part down, the rest of the course is going to be a lot more enjoyable for you. Um, so first I'm going to talk a little bit about theory in general, and then I'll talk about functionalist theory. And give an example and there is a part uh, later in the video where you'll need to use the discussion boards or response in order to figure out the functionalist analysis that we're doing because the only way to do it is to really think through it and talking to each other throwing ideas out there that's the best way to learn I know you know especially if you're coming from high school that you know the teacher lectures you write down what they say and you memorize it and you spit it back on the test that's not how sociology works so don't be looking for that it's not what our discipline does our discipline is about learning in a way of critical thinking and that comes really through interaction and discussion so what i'm going to say here should lay it out if you have any questions also use response or discussion and I've separated the theories in each into their own video because I think it's too much to try and, and wrap your head around all three of them in one sitting. So don't try to do that. <laughs> Bad idea. Okay. First of all, what is theory? Theory is an explanation based on a set of facts that we have observed. Theory can change if new facts emerge. Theory is always being revised in the face of new evidence, so theory is not there forever. The theories that we have in sociology are perspectives for helping us analyze, and there have been, um, these theories still stand, the classic theories, and so we've got some pretty good theories in sociology for explaining society. Um, theory, here's another thing. Theory is not the truth. Um, theory is a way of analysis. It's a perspective. It's the best explanation that we've got according to the facts that we can observe. So that's what theory is. Theory is not fact. Theory is not truth. Theory is the best that we can do using the scientific method right now to explain something. Okay. Now, in sociology, there are three levels of an analysis, three lenses that you can look at society through. And this is sort of comparable to the way you would use a microscope in biology. If you put the magnification on really, really high, you're going to see something completely different than if your magnification is on low. On low, you're going to see a cell, let's say. On medium, maybe you're going to see more detail of that cell. And on maximum, right, magnification, you're going to see the individual components, the really tiny, tiny parts of the cell. Social theory works the same way. It's what we call a level of analysis. We have three levels of analysis in sociology. The first one is called the micro level. Micro from Greek meaning small. And that is where we look at uh, individual and small group interactions. That's the micro level. And symbolic interactionism is the theory that is most often used to look at the micro level. The second level of analysis is the meso level from the Greek for middle. That's that middle place in society where you're looking at particular organizations or groups. Let's say, you're looking at a church, an, a business organization, a subcultural group like a motorcycle gang. That's meso. Symbolic interactionism is also used commonly to do meso analysis, uh, though we won't be doing meso analysis very much in here. It's more of an advanced topic. Okay, the third level is macro, 
which is Greek for large, and this is where we study entire social systems and institutions and the way that they work. We're interested in the big picture. We're not interested in explaining things about individuals. We see individuals as part of a larger social context. So the individuals are there, but they're there as what we call social types. Um, a social type is a person who belongs to a demographic group and a demographic, you know what demographics are, you know, age, you know, marital status, uh, sex, gender, um, employment status, occupation, all those things they ask you on the census form. So when we look at a person in the macro analysis, we're seeing them as a representative of an entire demographic, millions of people. So we're interesting, interested at the macro level in stuff that affects you know, lots of people, 100,000 people or more, millions or more, depending on what you're doing. We've got two theories that do this. Each one has a different way or a different set of concerns that it's interested in. Uh, functionalism is one and conflict theory is the other. Today we're going to go a little deeper into functionalism than is in the book and you'll be responsible for this on the tests and it'll pretty much be used, it'll be helpful to you on every test, not just the test for this chapter. It'll be, and for your final paper actually. So it will be, this will be useful for you for the whole course. Okay. So here we go. Here are some definitions that you wanna get down. Um, I'll try to talk slow you can rewind the video, so if you miss something, go back and get it. Um, but I'll try to keep it as, as best I can. Okay, we're going to start with the macro theory of functionalism. Functionalism was the brainchild of Emile Durkheim back during the Industrial Revolution, you'll remember. And here are the functionalist definitions that you need to know. For a functionalist, society is made up of institutions. Society is made up of institutions. They overlap and they work together to keep the entire society running. If something changes in one institution, it's going to affect the others. Uh, in a way, you can say that society is like a big spider web. If you pull on one end of it, the shape of everything else is going to change a little bit. And so functionalism envisions society as this concept of interrelated parts that work together. The parts are called institutions or social institutions. Now this is not buildings, like you think, you know, the institute of this or that. Institutions in sociology, they're not buildings. Institutions are patterned behaviors. Now that is a very abstract concept, but let me give you an example that I think you'll understand thoroughly. Uh, think back to high school. Now, the institution we're talking about is education. High school is part of the institution of education. Think about the patterned behaviors or ways of doing things that go on. Um, there's a definite pattern. No matter what high school you go to, in our institution of education, it's pretty much the same things you do. Um, you, register, you enroll or you register for classes right? If there's a dress code, you, you do that. Some places have it, some places don't. Uh, you go to class. The day starts with a bell. There's a bell to tell you when the period ends. Um, there are periods for lunch and recess. It's a very structured day. You learn a very structured curriculum and at the end you, if you complete all the requirements, you get a diploma, a high school diploma. Now, 
education as an institution under functionalism, part of that, an example of that, are the patterned behaviors of high school. And here's the other thing, institutions, this is very important, they have a life in and of themselves apart from any individual. In other words, you've graduated high school, high school's still there, they're still doing everything that they did before. The institution continues. So just because you left high school, it doesn't mean that that institution went away. It exists independently of you. So that's very important to a functionalist. So institutions are patterned behaviors that have an existence independent of any individual. So the abstract part of this is we are so used to, especially Americans, thinking in individual terms that this really turns our heads around. And we have to really work to change that thinking to the level of the social, the large groups, the entire system. It's like system thinking. If you're into computers, this is like thinking about doing the social operating system. Okay. Now, what are these institutions? Well, the major ones you can probably think of, we have the institution of government, institution of law or legal system, education, family is an institution, the media is an institution, the economy is a very important institution. And so these are the institutions of society. Okay, so those are your basic definitions. So if you're asked how does a functionalist define society or think about society, you'll know that it's a series of patterned behaviors that make up institutions which work together to keep the entire social system moving. And it's independent of any one individual. It's a macro. That's what makes it macro, is that it's the large-scale perspective. Okay. Now the second part of functionalism has to do with the way that institutions work. They have different functions, and there are three kinds of function. The first one is a manifest function. When society is running and the society has agreed as a whole through its political process or what have you, that there are certain values uh, that should guide government and law and institutions will be structured according to that. Well, a manifest function is what is intended, what is actually intended by society. So manifest function is an intended effect of how institutions run. So if a, if, if a society has, uh, is very family-centered, then the manifest functions of its institutions will be there to support the family. That's what they intend to do. It's, it, they meant to do that. Manifest function. Second, latent functions. These are, these are fun because you have to look for them. Latent functions are unintended effects of how the system is operating, of how an institution is patterning its behavior. So a latent function is an unintended consequence, and we'll be getting to that in a minute. So there are manifest functions and latent functions. A dysfunction means a little more than it does in ordinary language. A dysfunction is something that causes too much stress on any one institution or system. It begins to, its normal operation begins to break down. So dysfunction doesn't mean, oh, there's something wrong with it. Be very specific about this when you talk about it. Dysfunction means that that institution's set of practices is under severe strain and maybe to the point of breaking down, system breakdown, for a functionalist, very serious thing. You don't want your, any one of your institutions to start breaking down. Okay, 
So those are the definitions and make sure that you know them very well and very precisely. Um, the wording that we use in sociology, although it sounds like everyday language, this stuff is specific and it has conceptual meaning that's very important. Um, you can't really substitute one word for another, just like in science, and have it mean the same thing. On your science test, you know, if the answer is atom, you can't write cell. Um, it's the same thing in sociology. So remember, this is specialized vocabulary. Okay. So here's an example of a functionalist analysis. So I may ask you, and this will be great for your final paper, maybe you'll choose functionalism to analyze one of the videos on our YouTube playlist. Um, maybe functionalism seems to fit best. And so this is an example of how to do that. Now, in America, over the past decades, we've had something called the war on drugs. And I'm sure you're all familiar, familiar with it, um, but this is how a sociology sees it. Okay, we know what the war on drugs is. It's an effort to stop uh, drug use and trafficking by jailing drug users and traffickers. That's the manifest function. The legal system had this in mind when they changed these laws to be harsher on penalties and jail time. So the manifest function of the war on drugs is to put users and traffickers in jail and they do this by increased budgets for enforcement in this area, increased penalties, and things like mandatory jail time, mandatory sentencing. So they changed the, the legal institution, the institution of law, changed their patterned behaviors to include these things. Now, the, manif the manifest function to lower crimes by changing these practices may have had latent functions, unintended effects on other institutions. Remember the spider web. If you pull one end, it's going to change the shape of everything. Remember how functionalists look at society. Everything is interrelated, and if something changes in one institution, the other institutions are going to have to respond to that or be shaped by that in some way because the system is an interrelationship, like a spider web. Okay, now consider first to do this, consider the institutions of society and what they are, and then think about the war on drugs. Now, some of our inst major institutions, remember, are family, um, economy, education, media. Economy includes, when you hear economy in sociology, that means occupation, employment, workplace, all of that stuff goes under economy. Um, so think about what the institutions are and think about how they have been affected by the change in the institution of law regarding war on drugs. Are there any results that were unintended, latent, latent functions? At this point, I want you to use the discussion board on Blackboard or the YouTube video response to give your thoughts on this issue. How might other institutions have been impacted? Now, I also want you to include the next issue in your discussion or video response. Can you do the same for dysfunctions? Thinking about the effects that changes in the law, the institution of law would have on other institutions and the organizations that make them up. Um, is there any system that would be under stress to the point of having a dysfunction, meaning so stressed that the system is close to breakdown. The system is very close to not working anymore or the system doesn't work anymore. So for your response and in discussion on Blackboard, whichever method you want to use, um, tell me what are, and tell each other and bounce this around, what are the, the 
manifest, latent, and dysfunctions of the war on drugs. And then I will post, when we've had time to discuss that, I will post uh, some uh, a, a summary of what we've come up with and let you know how a functionalist would then make their conclusion. So here's a sum in summary. There's a purpose to all of this. The purpose doesn't end at analyzing the latent and dysfunctions of a change in an institution. If there is, if there are latent, latent um, functions that are causing problems in society, our analysis lets us find out where the problem is occurring so that we can propose solu social solutions to the problems. So if an institution has a dysfunction, is at the point of so much stress that it's about to stop functioning, we can suggest ways in which that or other institutions could change their practices to make this problem better. So it's all about sol problem solving. Sociology is about making the world a better place as a discipline. That's what we do. So functionalist theory is really a way of doing that. So in summary, functionalism is a macro theory that's large scale that sees society as a system of interrelated institutions that work to keep the whole society going. When one institution changes its practices, the others will be affected in some way because they are interrelated. Now, practice functionalism, when you're looking at the TV news and you see that a new law is being proposed, practice this. Think about, might there be any latent functions? And if there are latent functions or dysfunctions, think about it. Try to get into the habit of thinking about it. Okay, that's it for the functionalism uh, lecture see you in discussion and response and the next lecture I'll post will be on our other macro theory which is conflict theory and we'll do the same thing with that. Have a great day.